Do you feel lonely and disappointed with our world turned upside down with the COVID crisis? Do you believe you are unable to cope? Are you feeling empty within, being unable to connect with those whom you love and cherish? Are you frustrated at being closed up and suffocated with the limitedness of your current situation? Do you feel no one really loves you? Know that you are not alone. Know that you are loved. Know that you are cared for and you are precious. Know that you are valued beyond measure. Know that you are connected to an infiniteness and relationships that go beyond the possibility of definition. Know that you belong. I'm inviting you because I know that I belong. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 1. Freedom is what we have. Christ has set us free. Stand then as free people and do not allow yourselves to become slaves again. The Word of the Lord. I belong to freedom. The God who created me with so much love wants me to be truly and completely free. My dear young friends, the first book of the Bible begins with this simple truth. God created us out of great love. He made us in His own image and likeness. He created us for freedom, to share in His own life. But unfortunately, we all know how this wonderful plan of God was ruined by our sin. Our first parents, who represent all of us, they thought they could be happy without God. And they sought freedom from Him. Unfortunately, in separating themselves from Him, they destroyed their own happiness. But the Bible is full of wonderful stories of how God time and again went after our ancestors and pleaded with them with great love to come back to him to enter once again into this beautiful reality of his love for us God wants to free us God wants us to be liberated he wants us to be happy but my dear friends true happiness can only come from genuine freedom and genuine freedom can only come by linking ourselves with a God who loves us. True freedom, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, comes from living in Jesus. All of us want to be free and unfortunately sometimes we think that freedom is doing whatever we want. It is my life and I can do and I should have the freedom to do whatever I want. In a sense, that is true. But sometimes the choices that we make, the attitudes that we adopt, lead us to self-destruction. We create our own unhappiness. We destroy the wonderful relationships that we share with our friends, with our parents, our relatives and our colleagues. 
our selfishness gets the better of us. We want to be more than others. We want to be richer than others. We want to be happy sometimes at the cost of the happiness of others. And that is how the wonderful creation of God was ruined and continues to be ruined by our sin. My dear friends, God has made us for freedom. And if we want to discover true freedom, if we want to discover true life in God, we must rejoin ourselves with Him. We must come back to Him. Him who loves us with an everlasting love. Jesus tells us, I am the wine. My father is the wine dresser. You are the branches. Like the branches who do not have life within them, separated from the wine, we will not have any life within us, separated from Jesus, who is the life giver. As we reflect on the meaning and purpose of our lives, as we seek to enter fully into the wonderful truth of God's love, let us ask the Lord to give us that true freedom that can only come from Him. Let us be honest with ourselves, acknowledge our weaknesses, our faults, our shortcomings, and ask Jesus for the strength to turn back from ways and from attitudes that are not helpful and to come back to Him and to live always lives of love, of service, of forgiveness, and of friendship. God bless you all. Isaiah 59, 1-2 See, the Lord's hand is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. Rather, your iniquities have been barriers between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. John 8, 34 Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. Romans 5.12 Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned. Romans 3 10 to 18. As it is written, there is no one who is righteous, not even one. There is no one who has understanding. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. There is no one who shows kindness, there is not even one.
Their throats are opened graves. They use their tongues to deceive. The venom of vipers is under their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery are in their paths. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. 1 John 3:8 to 10 Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The son of God was revealed for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil those who have been born of god do not sin because god's seed abides in them they cannot sin because they have been born of god the children of god and the children of the devil are revealed in this way all who do not do what is right are not from god nor are those who do not love their brothers and sisters james 4:17 anyone then who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin mark 7 20 to 23 and he said it is what comes out of a person that defiles for it is from within from the human heart that evil intentions come fornication theft murder adultery avarice wickedness deceit licentiousness envy slander pride folly all these evil things come from within and they defile a person Galatians 5:19 to 21 Now the works of the flesh are obvious fornication impurity licentiousness idolatry sorcery enmities strife jealousy anger quarrels dissensions factions envy drunkenness carousing and things like these i am warning you as i warned you before those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of god one corinthians 6:9 to 10 do you not know that wrong doers will not inherit the kingdom of god do not be deceived fornicators idolaters adulterers male prostitutes sodomites thieves the greedy drunkards revilers robbers none of these will inherit the kingdom of god
Revelation 21, 8 But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. James 4.4 4. Adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Isaiah 1 4 Ah, sinful nation, people laden with iniquity, offspring who do evil, children who deal corruptly, who have forsaken the Lord, who have despised the Holy One of Israel, who are utterly estranged. Galatians 6, 7 to 8 Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. Mark 9, 43-48 if your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies, and the fire is never quenched. Jeremiah 4.4 4. Circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Remove the foreskin of your hearts. O people of Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem, or else my wrath will go forth like fire and burn with no one to quench it because of the evil of your doings. Romans 6, 23 For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 John 1 
8 to 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. John 5.40 Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. John 8, 10 to 11 She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. 1 John 3, 4-6 Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Isaiah 44, 22 I have swept away your transgressions like a cloud and your sins like mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Isaiah 1, 18 Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. Isaiah 1, 16-17 Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Ephesians 1, 7-8 In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His grace that He lavished on us. 2 Corinthians 5 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. One, Peter two. 
24 to 25 He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed for you were going astray like sheep but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls romans 5 6 to 8 for while we were still weak at the right time christ died for the ungodly indeed rarely when anyone die for a righteous person though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die but god proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners christ died for us 1 john 2 1 to 2 my little children i am writing these two things to you so that you may not sin but if anyone does sin we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world galatians 5 1 for freedom christ has set us free stand firm therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery John 8:35 to 36 The slave does not have a permanent place in the household The son has a place there forever So if the son makes you free you will be free indeed prayer psalm 51 1 5 7 10 to 12 have mercy on me o god according to your steadfast love according to your abundant mercy blot out my transgressions wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin for i know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against you you alone Have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment indeed I was born guilty a sinner when my mother conceived me purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow create in me a clean heart o god and put a new and right spirit within me do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your holy spirit from me restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit
Namaste, my dear sisters and brothers. The God in me greets the God in each one of you. Dear friends, we believe the power of meditation. The attitude to meditation is absolutely basic. Second, preparation for meditation. Anything we do requires preparation. Our own good mothers spend a lot of time preparing a good meal for us. A good student spends hours, sleepless nights preparing for his examinations, preparing for an interview. We spend time preparing for journeys. If meditation is to be done well, we need to prepare ourselves. Preparation implies many things. But a simple indication I'd like to bring forward to you is, you know, just loosen up your body. You can't jump into meditation. You need to sort of say relax. Okay. So may I invite you, wherever you are, maybe if you could please stand. Stand and stretch your body. You know, start with your fingers. Just loosen up your fingers, your wrists. Maybe stand on your toes, on your heels, the sides of your leg. Bend your knee. Turn to the right or left. Just relax before you sit down quietly. Now please be seated. Before you take your posture for, posture for meditation, may I just indicate about the method of meditation we want to do today. There are hundreds of types of meditation in different religions. Our Christian faith offers us many methods of meditation. But to my mind, one of the oldest methods of meditation, one of the most universal methods of meditation in the Christian tradition is what is called the Jesus Prayer. If I may use Indian terminology, you know, in every religion, calling on the name of God is meditation. Just calling on the name of God. So in Indian terms, the Jesus prayer would be Yesu Nama Japa. Name of Jesus or the Jesus prayer. This method of meditation to my mind is the most universal, most simple. To start with the biblical basis for this. Every prayer, every means of contact with God is based on the Bible. And every method of meditation is based on the Bible. This method of meditation, the Jesus prayer, goes back to the early centuries of Christianity and springs from the well-known miracle of Jesus, Jesus giving sight to the blind man of Jericho, Bartimaeus. Now we have several narratives of Jesus healing the blind, but the one from which the Jesus prayer has sprung is Jesus healing the blind man of Jericho. So this method consists of, first of all, we read the text of this miracle that Jesus worked. Bartimaeus had his experience of having his eyes open. And from your Bible classes, you know, almost every miracle of Jesus is symbolic. So Bartimaeus not only gets physical sight, he gets up and as the gospel says, he follows Jesus on the way. His physical sight was only a preparation for spiritual sight. So we'll read this text of the healing of Bartimaeus. We will try to make it our own. And thus, by God's grace, we all have our physical sight, but we will get the spiritual sight of following Jesus, coming closer to Jesus. Okay, friends, let's prepare ourselves for meditation. Take a comfortable posture. Alert posture. Become aware of our breath. You know, breath awareness is not only one method of meditation, it is actually a preparation for any method. Breath is the best means of recollecting ourselves. 
our bodies, our minds are in constant motion, scatter brain, so to say. When we recollect our breath, we recollect our whole selves. So with this comfortable posture, with our bodies erect, let's become aware once again of our breath. God breathing life into me here and now. Let us receive this breath. Accept this breath. Shall I pray gratefully? Let us breathe out. Surrender this breath back to God. Total trust. Total surrender. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Chapter 10 verses 46 to 52. And they came to Jericho. As he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, rise, he is calling you. And throwing off his mantle, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Master, let me receive my sight. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. So dear friends, the first step of this meditation is to silently read the gospel passage with all our full attention. Maybe read it even more than once. Second step, become aware of our breath, recollect ourselves fully. Let us try to enter into this experience. Let's imagine ourselves to be like Bartimaeus, blind in so many ways, helpless, depending on the mercy, compassion of others for a living. The only possession Bartimaeus had was the baking bowl and maybe the stick. He must have always wanted to meet Jesus because he had heard of this miracle worker who even raised people from the dead, cured lepers and healed the blind. He was too helpless, nobody would take him to Jesus. And here is the greatest opportunity of his life, Jesus passing along the way. He couldn't believe himself. And he shouts, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. People try to silence him, shut him up. He doesn't bother. This is the only chance of his life that Jesus is coming to meet him. He believes in the power of Jesus to heal him. As the gospel says, he shouts even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And imagine, despite the din of maybe hundreds of people talking and shouting, this feeble voice touches the heart of Jesus. And Jesus has called him. And Jesus says, what do you want? Jesus heals him. Dear friends, this can become our experience. So the core of the Jesus prayer 
is nothing but repeating this prayer of Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So we are breathing in and breathing out. Just divide this verse into two parts. First part, Jesus, son of David. As you breathe in, try to say, Jesus, son of David. Lengthen any one syllable. For example, Jesus, son of David. As you breathe out, say, have mercy on me. So it, it will come by practice. So let's just do this. I'm here sitting, helpless, blind. Jesus is coming along. The all powerful Jesus, the miracle walk, the one who can give me sight, the one who can heal me, body, mind, heart, and soul. All I need to say, the powerful prayer of Bartimaeus that won him this miracle. Thinking of our breath, join our breath to this prayer. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. As our breath enters into every atom and cell of our being, from the tip of our head, from, sorry, from the pit of our head to the tip of our toes, with the breath, let this prayer enter. Not just the words, but the faith and trust of this prayer. So as you breathe in, you say, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. As you breathe out, have mercy on me. conclude by saying even aloud Jesus son of David have mercy on me glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be all without end Do you feel lonely and disappointed with our world turned upside down with the COVID crisis? Do you believe you are unable to cope? Are you feeling empty within, being unable to connect with those whom you love and cherish? Are you frustrated at being closed up and suffocated with the limitedness of your current situation? Do you feel no one really loves you? Know that you are not alone. Know that you are loved. Know that you are cared for and you are precious. Know that you are valued beyond measure. Know that you are connected to an infiniteness and relationships that go beyond the possibility of definition. Know that you are belong. I'm inviting you because I know that I belong.